Afternoon, right here. It's Friday afternoon, right? And it's our hostage here. Now, this is not another episode. This is just a firm up, right? The Silla Black robbery from the previous episode, right? Now, right, um, you got to remember, when I do my episodes and things, I don't go and look for all the um, um, articles and research and all that. I just do it from memory, right? So I might get the odd name wrong or whatever. And then afterwards, I might then go and see if there's any articles about it, right? And I talk about um, the article by Jeff Edwards in the Daily Mirror. And I noticed on the Daily Mirror's website, all the links to it, right, are gone. Right, well, today I've discovered this thing called the Free Library or something, right? It's where they throw back or something, where they keep all the articles. Anyway, right, so boom, right, where are we now? Now, let's go and, right, now I want, now I found two articles relating to Scylla Black, right? Oh, no, right, another one, right? How about this? I found one on Mail Online, right, that, um, Scylla Black, right, they didn't only rob her in life, when she died, Right, on her grave, she had, like, this bronze plaque and all that, and thieves stole it and trashed her grave. So they even stole from poor old Scylla Black, right, when she was dead. Right, but anyway, right, here we go, right, here's the first one, right. Um, first article I found, right. Now, it's, now the title of it is called Burglary Gang Linked to Scylla Case Jailed. Raiders Used Hello and country life magazine right now you remember i told you about them right and i said the um the bloke's name was doe right well apparently it was dole d-o-l-e as in bob dole the american right with a dodgy army fought in the war right um not doe as in like making bread i suppose right but let me read you the article right burglary gang linked to silla case jailed raiders use hello and country life Right, it's a link page citation, bylined Emma Gumby. It's an article by Jeff Edwards from the Daily Mirror. Right, members of a gang suspecting of, suspected of burgling the home of Scylla Black were jailed yesterday. Richard Blundell, 43, and Gavin Dole, I said it was Dole, but it was Dole, right, both from Liverpool, are believed to be part of a professional gang of burglars who use copies of Hello and Country Life magazines to choose their wealthy targets. Yesterday, Blundell of Bardsay Road, Walton, was sentenced to eight years and Dole of Boodcroft Stockbridge Village received seven years at Chester Crown Court. They had pleaded guilty to two counts of conspiracy to commit burglary in the home counties and one count of conspiracy to commit aggravated burglary at a mansion in Cheshire. None of the charges related to the offences committed at Scylla Black's house in Denham, Buckinghamshire. However, a spokesman for Thames Valley Police confirmed that the operation to target the offenders was linked to the burglary at the former blind date presenter's home, Scylla Black. Right, and, uh, I said, yeah, because I told you, you fucking morons. Anyway, she said the officers working on Operation Harpoon case were investigating a possible link, right? This crime is still under investigation. Blundell and Dole pleaded guilty to involvement in a series of burglaries in Cheshire, Surrey and Buckinghamshire. Among the most serious of their crimes was a burglary at the home of a wealthy businesswoman, Anne Bardsley, from Mottram St Andrew in Cheshire in February this year. The court heard how Mrs Bardsley, 60, who is the widow of well-known Cheshire property developer, Roland Bardsley, was in her kitchen when two masked men burst in and threatened her with a metal, metal knife sharpener. A metal knife sharpener? Strange, isn't it? Metal? Hang on, let me read that again. Right, she was in her kitchen when two masked men burst in and threatened her with a metal knife sharpener, forcing her to open her safe and hand over £400,000 worth of jewellery and cash. She was initially tied to a towel rail in her bathroom before the men locked her in a room where she was discovered 20 minutes later by her security guard. Fuck me, she had a security guard, right, and it took him 20 minutes. God, he ain't that good then, was he? Blundell, Blundell and Dole both denied they were in the house at the time of burglary, but admitted they had acted as lookouts. 
Judge Stephen Clark said, the horror of what happened to Mrs. Bargley, one cannot even imagine. The judge praised the police operation which tracked down the burglars. Yeah, well, it came from me, Your Honour. Right, and they knew a year earlier, and they could have stopped Scylla Black being robbed. All they had to say to her, didn't have to worry her, say, Scylla, please put your jewellery in the bank, right, and then it's all right. And then if they do burgle you, they ain't going to get no jewellery, right, and, and the safe's empty, right? So then if they burgle you, just open the door and say, look, it's fuck all there, it's in the bank. But no, they didn't do that, right, and we'll get onto that in a minute, in the next article, right? The judge said... Their actions seem to have bought this spate of offences. Oh, no, the judge praised the police which tracked down the burglars. He said their actions, he meant the police, seem to have brought this spate of offences to an end, although nobody, although everybody involved may not be before us. Yeah, but there's obviously others that got away with it. Silla Black's mansion was targeted by burglars in August 2003. The TV presenter had jewellery and other items valued at a million pounds stolen during the raid, which happened while she was holidaying with Sir Cliff Richard in Portugal. Right, yeah, and we know what happened next. Insurance company refused to pay her out because of no locks on the downstairs windows. But anyway, her son Jack, who was at, at, at home alone, was beaten and a knife held to his throat until he re revealed the whereabouts of valuables. A further two men, Stephen Barlow, 40, of Lambourne Road, Walton, and Thomas Mee, 27, of Sherwin Road, Anfield, were jailed for 30 months, 30 months after admitting a separate charge of conspiracy to steal. Well, there you have it, you see. Remember what I said, right? Okay, a year before um, um, uh, Scylla Black gets robbed, I'm telling the Thames Valley um, Force Intelligence Bureau, remember at that meeting... First meeting now uh, at the Holiday Inn at Gatwick Airport in the conference room that they hired. We're sitting there, right? Okay. There is Detective Constable Jim Hill from the Thames Valley Art and Antique Squad. There is Detective Constable, right? Jackie Murdoch from the Thames Valley Art and Antique Squad, right? There's Detective Sergeant, right? Mick Brown, all right, from the Thames Valley Force Intelligence Bureau. Right, there's Detective um, Constable right, uh, Richard May from the Force Intelligence Bureau. There's Mark Dalrymple, the loss adjuster from Tyler's. And you remember, that's when I told him about Scylla Black, she's being targeted, and Jackie Murdoch went, oh, Paul, don't start all this celebrity game. I went, listen, she's being targeted, they're right, they're, they're Sting, fucking um, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and all that game went right into it, right, and they wrote it down. Right, they didn't do fuck all. A year later, Scylla Black gets robbed million pounds worth and then they go oh shit so that's when they go and see sting and then they go and see uh um, what's his name um, um andrew lloyd webber right so now we know right now i've said all this right and now it's being backed up right i was a bit worried because I, I knew there was articles but i thought the daily mirror didn't them or something right jeff edwards articles but i just found them today right now we're going to move on to the next one right um because this is the crucial one right this is the kicker right now Right, um, this one, again, from the free library. I love it when they say free and library. Right, anyway, it's by F Farlex, right? So everyone, Farlex, they're good people here. Free library, right. This is the headline, right? Tipped off over Scylla a year ago, exclusive, but cops didn't tell her, right? Byline is by Jeff Edwards, chief crimes correspondent for the Daily Mirror. Right, here we go. Police were tipped off a year ago that robbers planned to raid Scylla Black's mansion, but they did not warn her. Thieves stole £1 million in cash and gems when they burgled the ex-Blind Date star's home. Her youngest son, Jack, 22, was beaten with an iron bar by the gang. Information was passed to Thames Valley Police last August that Scylla's house was being targeted. The underworld informant, well, that's me, right? Paul Hendry, right? Turbo Paul, art hostage, right? Okay, that's me. I'm the underworld informant who spoke to Jeff Edwards, right? The writer of this article, chief correspondent for the Daily, Daily Mirror, right? The underworld informant, right? The underworld informant, that's me, added that the homes of Sting and Lord Lloyd Webber might, may also be hit. Well, yeah, I'll tell you, we know the story now, don't you, right? Right, so, Scylla's eldest son, Bobby Willis, who is also her manager, said yesterday, 
We were not told by the police they had information a crime was being planned. The informant, this is me, right? The informant warned police that raiders planned to use a 4x4 vehicle to ram French windows at Lloyd Webber's mansion near Newbury, Berkshire. His £200 million art collection, which contains masterpieces by Mille and Rossetti, is protected by state-of-the-art alarm systems, so the robbers were planning a blitzkrieg attack, attack to snatch the paintings. Right, let me read that again. Right, his £200 million art collection, which contains masterpieces by Mille and Rossetti, is protected by state-of-the-art alarm systems, so the robbers were planning a blitzkrieg attack to snatch the paintings. Two weeks later, a police surveillance team saw two known country house burglars apparently casing Sting's £10 million Tudor mansion near Salisbury, Wiltshire. The incident added weight to the informant's tip-off, but detectives still did not tell Scylla, 60, that her home was at risk. Well, all that to say was Scylla put your jewellery in the bank. It's not like she had loads of paintings and furniture and all that game. Like she had a safe full of jewellery. All that to say, Scylla, bump, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a lift. Go down the bank, stick it in the safety deposit box and you ain't got to worry. But no, they done fuck all. They didn't tell her. Right, so let's just read that again. The incident ha added weight to the informant's tip-off, but detectives still did not tell Scylla, 60, that her home was at risk. Three intruders scaled a fence at her two million pound house in Denham, Buckinghamshire, eleven days ago, and broke in through a window. Right, son Jack was the only one at home. He had a knife out to his throat and he was badly beaten up. Many of the gems stolen were given to Scylla by her late husband Bobby. Here we go. Here we get to the crux of the matter. Right here, Thames Valley Police denied yesterday they had been tipped off. Detective Inspector Phil Chandler, in charge of the investigation, said, We did not have any information that the home of Scylla Black had been targeted for a robbery. But a police insider said, Now the police insider is Detective Constable Jim Hill, right, of the Thames Valley Art and Antique Squad. Now he just retired. Right, and when Scylla Black was robbed, he went fucking potty, right, and he was screaming. And then Thames Valley Police, senior officers, right, and probably even this Detective Inspector Phil Chandler, right, threatened Jim Hill, right, that, that um, his life would be made a misery if he went public, that the Thames Valley Police already knew that Scylla Black was a target, and Sting and, and Andrew Lloyd Webber, right. So Jim Hill just wanted to be called here a police insider, Right, to Jeff Edwards, right, he was the one who approached Jeff Edwards and then Jeff Edwards called me and I just confirmed everything that Jim's, Jim Hill had said. Right, so let's go, right, here we go, right. So, Thames Valley Police denied yesterday they had been tipped off. Detective Inspector Phil Chandler, in charge of the investigation, said, we did not have any advance information that the home of Scylla Black had been targeted for a robbery. But a police insider, Jim Hill, said information was received that country house thieves were making plans to rob Scylla Black's home and a number of other wealthy homes. A risk assessment was carried out and a decision was taken not to tell Scylla Black. Right? The information did not contain exact details of when the robbery was to take place, right, or who would be involved. Right, well, okay, taking that in into account, right, my risk assessment would be, right, all Scylla's got to do is move her jewellery to the bank from the safe in her house, okay, win, lose or draw, if she's targeted or not targeted, right, she's protected, right, it ain't like she's got to fill up a lorry load full of antiques like Sting would have had to have done, right, and then stored them or something, this is just like a box of jewellery, right, so the risk assessment was obviously carried out by fucking morons, right, also, criminals are constantly checking out wealthy homes to see what the prospects are for robbing them. In most cases, no crime is ever committed. No, what happens is the list is made and the list of fucking likelihood is also put down there and the risk factors. But there is a list, right? There is a fucking list of all the big houses and all the lovely gear they got in there, but all the problems that the thieves could face, right, trying to target them. 
And obviously, they're going to take the, the low-hanging fruit. They're going to take the easy ones first, right? And over the years, more get done on the list. So if you've got a list of 100, right, you might get number 1, 15, 37, 72, 93, right, where they're robbed, right? And then so then all of a sudden, you go back and then 68 gets robbed and then 32 gets robbed, right? It's like fucking bingo, right? Okay, so that's how it works, right? Criminals are constantly checking out wealthy homes to see what the prospects are for robbing them. In most cases, no crime is ever committed. Because of this, it was not felt necessary to tell Silla Black we had to balance the risk of alarming her and causing the family stress and anxiety when the evidence wasn't strong enough to, desert, to justify it. Fuck me, how much alarming her is it put your jewellery in the bank, right? And how much stress is it knowing the jewellery's in the bank, the family ain't got to worry. Right, and the evidence weren't strong enough to justify it. Well, I think the proof of the pudding's in the eating, because Scylla did get fucking robbed, right? Armed robbery, lost a million pounds worth of jewellery, right? And to make fucking add insult to injury, two months later, the insurance company refused to pay her out. Unbelievable, right? Unreal, isn't it? Hey, look, everything I said in the other thing is true, see? And, I, and, I, and it's all backed up with primary evidence. Right, I just wanted to let you know that, right? And I should keep you up to date if there's any any more developments on that. Now, we've got plenty of episodes coming, right? we got, um, um, well, uh, uh, loads of people anyway, right? List, uh, uh, list as long as your arm, right? All lovely stories and some nasty stories and, and all that carry on, right? Um, so anyway, this is a 16-minute one, right? So it's only like a quarter of one, isn't it? Um, should I call this episode 11? Okay, I'll tell you what we do. We call this um, Art Hostage, Friday Afternoon, Fireside Chat, Episode 11, right? Scylla Black, Update, right? Sting, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Madonna, and all that game, right? Okay. Oh, the Madonna thing as well, right? If you notice, I've put up her art collection, right? Fuck me. She's got, right, she's got some lovely bits for, for uh, Ledger and all that game, right? Okay. Um... And um, what else? Sting, yeah. Well, he went off, didn't he? Oh, and don't forget, if you go on my Twitter page, you can see photographs of the hallway, uh, uh, right, in Sting's um, lake house in Wiltshire, right? And there it is, the rug. You remember the rug I said? He's got a fucking great huge, I said carpet, right? But rug, fucking great huge carpet in the thing there, right? In his hallway, right? It's still there, right? Because it's a photograph. And if you look in the centre there, right, is um, um lovely antique table that he was supplied right, £6 million worth of antiques, right, worth about a million pound trade, right, off of Christopher Hodsall, right, it's H-O-D-S-O-L-L, -L, right, and I've also on my Twitter shown links between Sting and Christopher Hodsall, right, who mentions that over the years he's worked for Sting and Sir Mick Jagger and Sir Elton John and all these other people, right, so all the dots disconnect, and as you know, Sting became the target because David Hodsall, Right, had a manager of his shop in London called Cadogan. I know Cadogan, it's a strange name, but I think it's Welsh, right? Cadogan. Right, anyway, Cadogan gets in with someone with the Johnson gang, right? A dealer who buys all the Johnson gang stolen stuff. And it's Cadogan, the manager of Christopher Hodsall, right? Who then sticks Sting up to be a target. Right, he says, you know, this is the list of stuff that Christopher Hodsall has sold to Sting, and it's all there in Lake Else that can be um, stolen. Right, so that was the connection there. And then when all this when all this came out, right, didn't come out in public, right, but when all this came out during the investigation, Christopher Hodsall closed his shop down and he fucked off to Morocco, I think, right, for about a year, right, to let all the dust settle and, and die down and that. Cadogan, he got sacked from Christopher Hodsall, right, interviewed by the police, he shit himself, right, but he um, didn't get charged, he tried to cooperate and say who the dealer was buying stuff off the Johnsons down in Cheltenham, right, he was trying, you know, he trying to grasp as many people up as he could, but he didn't have very much good intelligence, I don't know whether he got charged, I might find out later, Cadogan, right, um, and you might think, how do I know Cadogan, well, Cadogan, right, he bought else down the same street as me, really, yeah, right, he bought house down the bottom of the road from me, right? Um, and then I got to know him, and he said, oh, I'll work with Christopher Hodsall, da 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 Sting's the, um, is the punter and all that. And then he was telling me, and, I, you know, and he knew who I was and that about art crime. And that's when he went to me. Yeah, he went, um, you know, he's a target and he's a target. 
da 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 bum. Right, so I got the target, right, off of Cadogan, who was talking to the uh, dealer in Cheltenham, who was uh, buying stolen property off the Johnson gang, right? And then all of a sudden, I get in with the Johnson's lawyer, Winter, Martin Winter, right? Okay, Martin, he became, he's a friend of mine, right? Um, and then I got in with um, um, the Johnson's um, mum, the grandmother, right? Ricky and Jimmy's mum, uh, oh, the matriarch of the jo Johnson family, right? And I have a chat to them, they're all right, you know what I mean? You know, telling me about all the kids and how they're running wild and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, so, so you see how the connections, right? How the sort of sometimes lucky, and you just got to, right? And, and if you're an intelligence gatherer, you just got to join the dots. So, Cadogan moves down the bottom of the road to me. Oh, yeah, Cadogan, what'd you do? Oh, I'm an antique shop manager, right? For Christopher Hodsall in London. I went, oh, are you? Right? He went, yeah. He said, we supplied um, Sting with £6 million pounds worth of antiques. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Da, da, da. Bubbly bump. And then all of a sudden, we get down to the sort of how he's a target now, and Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber, and Da, da, da. And then we moved on, and then say, so now you see how, how these things all join together, right? With the separation. Well, we've got up to 21 minutes. I'm trying to sort of rabbit on a, a bit here, right? Just to sort of make it worth your while for the weekend, right? So, anyway, there we go, right? So, now, right? Not only have I, um, I'll just throw it all out there, right? And then later on, I'll just go to find the evidence to back it up, right? Because I know what I'm saying is the truth. Right, and if you tell the truth, you haven't have, ain't got to have a good memory other than just remember the truth, right? So I've now firmed up all the um, um, Cilla Black, Sting, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Madonna Guy Ritchie. Oh, Frogmore House, I forgot to tell you, didn't I? Frogmore House, right, is where the um, um, where they got a mausoleum attached to the house, right? For, to Queen Victoria, it's only open three days or five days a year, right, I went up there with Graham White, my old um, lawyer, right, and I opened the thing, boom, you know, it was like the scene really out of uh, uh, Once Upon a Time in America, you know, when um, Robert De Niro opened the mausoleum, right, um, uh, when he got the key, you know, later on, right, and he opens it, and there's all that pipe, pan pipe music. Well, anyway, I open the door, and there it is. There's um, there's like the big marble, and you know, and then, then go round. There was all paintings round there. Not many people have seen that inside Queen Victoria's mausoleum at Frogmore House. Anyway, boom, I'm up there with Graham, right, and then all of a sudden, right, I, I notice this building work on Frogmore. Right, so anyway, we walk in park, right, and I walk out, right, and I see that the, the, the um, doors to the dining room, right, are fucking left open. Nice sunny day, it's in May. Well, as I said to Graham, I went, have a look at that. I went, look, and then you looked in there, right, it's a fucking dining table, right, it's all laid out with silver gilt, right, candelabra, everything, right, centre terrines, yeah, we've been down that road, terrines, everything, right. Okay, must be millions of pounds worth on the sideboards, big trays and everything. There's all paintings around and everything, right? But to be honest, you don't really want paintings. Now, that's, this is like a thieves' paradise because all that silver can be st stolen. It'll be sold for quite good money and then it'll all be filtered through the silver trade, right? So rather than have a Van Gogh or a Van Dyke, right, or a, a Holbein, right, or something like that from the Royal Collection, which you've got no fucking chance with, right? It's just going to be an headache. But all this silver right, okay, can be like salt and reasonable money and then it'll all be wrapped up and then it'll appear in New York and all that in a, a few years later. So I went to Graham, I went, have a fucking look at that. Talk about lack of security, right? So now, boom, I come back, right, and then I speak to Mark Dalrymple and I go, Mark, right, um, I was just been down Frogmore, um, I said, with uh, my lawyer, I said, just for the day out, I said, we went down to have a look at Queen Victoria's mausoleum, it's only open a few days, I said, I noticed his building work. I said, and the fucking doors are, are left open and there's silver gilt everywhere. He went, really? I went, yeah. He went, oh, he said, amazing, isn't it? Anyway, boom, puts, I went, yeah, lack security. He went, oh, turbo. He said, I suppose it's all covered and all that. Boom, phone goes down. Right, about a week later, right, I get information, right, that a, um, that a known organiser of country house thefts, right, has gone up the frog mail, fro sorry, frog more else, right, during them five days of Queen Victoria, right, it's mausoleum open, right, and has noticed the same thing I noticed, the fucking lack of security, and he has now reported it back, right, and now frog more else is a target, 
right? It's work, be, building work being done, right? Um, two fucking lively young lads or lively lads, right? Go in there with bin liners, right? We're up, right? With them, well, what I used to use is, you know, laundry bags, big zip on them, right? They're made of really tough plastic, right? Right, uh, a laundry bag, fucking great things where people put laundry in. Well, you can go, right, they could go in there, say three of them with two or three bags each, they could fucking clear the table, the thing, the bump, the bump, zip it all up, be out of there, right? I reckon three minutes, right? And they probably have a few million pounds worth of silver, right? So all of a sudden, now this is a target. So now I'm back on the phone to Mark Del I went, Mark, I said, listen, I said, this is quite serious. I said, now Frogmore's a fucking. Um, a target. I said, now, two country house burglars or, or country house burglars have been given Frogmore as a target. I said, and they're going to go down and they're going to rob it. No, no. Oh, okay, Turbo. I'll, I'll get back to you. So, boom, he puts the phone down. He gets straight on the phone to soccer. Right, serious organised crime agency. I think they're disbanded. Uh, the time that they were operating in the UK, they spent £1.2 billion pound with a B, right? And they didn't fucking arrest hardly anyone, seize hardly any proceeds, right? £1.2 billion, right? Yeah, it cost five years. I think they are only in existence anyway. He's on the phone to soccer, Right, now he's got the inside man there, and I know him as well, you know what I mean? And we're going to get into all them heavy duty top police officers later anyway. He, Mark Delrymple was on the phone to soccer. Hello, yes, Turbo's told me that Frogmore House is a target. There's work going on and they've left the dining room doors open all day. No. Right, boom. They jump in the cars. They go fucking racing down, right, to Frogmore. Not like Scylla Black where they don't give a fuck, right? They go racing down, right, to Frogmore, right, fucking surround the place. Right, they, they they secure all the dining room doors, fucking all kinds of shit going down. They have a whole security review, right, and then lock, put it on lockdown. Right, it's on lockdown. Right, um, Frogmore else and a perimeter around it. Right, within three four days, right, surveillance right catches right a group of four right but um, burglars. Right, all carrying fucking laundry bags, right, wrapped up, right, heading towards Frogmore. So it's like, here they come, here they come, here they come, right? And they went, right, we're going to swoop on them, right? So they got, get to Frogmore. All of a sudden, they see the doors that are all fucking um, um, secured up and they see everything sort of like tight as a drum, right? And whether they spot someone looking at them or what. And then they turn around and then they just go over into Windsor Great Park. Now, if you've been to Frogmore House, you know, right, it's right on the Windsor Great Park. And then they sit down, right, as if they're fucking about, right, having a little picnic. Well, then the old Bill swoop on them, arrest them all, right, and then they go, they say, them, what, what were you doing? They went, oh, well, we were just going to the laundrette to pick up their laundry. That's why we got all the bags, right? And um, they had no evidence of what they were going to do, so they had to let them go. But there's a story there of how I prevented Frogmore House losing all its silver. Right, and then there was one other one, wasn't there? What was it? Oh, um, oh, that's it. Yeah, here we go. Um, J.K. Rowling, Joanne, right, right. She got a few quid when when Harry Potter was released, right. And one of the things she done is she bought a house in Aberfeldy, right. Now I know Aberfeldy well because there's a there's an artist friend of our family, God rest his soul, right. Who, um, and I used to go up to Aberfeldy and stay with him and his wife and the family and that, right, and my boy. Right, and um, and the collection of his work, and I'll do an episode on him. Fucking, he's one of Scotland's greatest um, landscapers, right, from an academic's point of view. Right, he never went commercial, but every art, he's the artist, artist, right. Um, you know what I mean? Um, Revilius, a bit of Nash, you know what I mean? Uh, Paul Nash, I mean. Um, Lion and Rhythm and all that game, right. Anyway, we're going to him another time. But anyway, J.K. Rowling buys this great big... Um, else, Kilassi else, right, on the banks of the river there, right, Tay, right, um, Victorian else, right, as a country else for herself, right, and her, and her husband, right, and the kids, I suppose, right, and it's surrounded by these great railings, she moves in, right, obviously she wants it to be quiet, right, but what she does, she gets all the railings painted with all the top gold, right, so it fucking stands out like a sore thumb, right, anyway, boom, burglars, right, jump over the fucking thing and they're casing the joint, looking through it, right? And now it's rumoured that um, 
J.K. Rowling, Joanne, right? She, uh, um, um, the, the Harry Potter author, right? She's bought a load of Scottish colourist paintings and she's got a lot of antiques and all this sort of carry on, right? So I hear that now J.K. Rowling at Aberfeldy is going to be targeted, right? So, right, they set up a little bit of a uh, what's name, right? The police, right, Scottish police, right, go and do a risk assessment. But unlike the British, they go and speak to J.K. Rowling, right? And so what she does is she moves all the valuable stuff that's in the country house to her secure flat or apartment or else in Edinburgh, right? And so the stuff that's in the um, place at Aberfeldy is very little. And she gave the police access, right, to see if they could fucking um, catch the burglars, right, bang to rights, right? But um, I don't think they caught the burglars, right? But J but, but J.K. Rowling moved all her antiques and everything from Kilassi House over to Edinburgh, so there was, there's another one, right? I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can do. Well, no, it's half an hour, right? 31 minutes, right? Nearly, yeah, 31 minutes, okay? 31 minutes for Friday afternoon, Art Hostage, Fireside Chat Podcast, episode 11, right? And have a lovely weekend, right? And we'll catch up again next week. I'm signing off now. It's Art Hostage saying goodbye and over and out.